You know what a 3D blast is. I know what a 3D blast is. Jerry knows what a 3D blast is. We all know, but you probably regard the game anywhere between eh and molested your mom. Between the isometric perspective, unconventional goal, and the tendency to twist the nips of anyone who plays it, people do not look back on this game very fondly. But what if I were to tell you that, they're, that they were wrong, and they were stupid, and I'm in your house? What if I were to tell you that Sonic 3D Blast is an unrefined gem? So to start this discussion, I want to set some common ground with you scum and complain for a bit. Sonic 3D Blast carries over inconveniences from the classics that I'm not too fond of. I never liked how you had to jump onto a spring, instead of actually being able to run into them. It would only make it easier to maintain momentum and convert it into vertical velocity while also opening up options in player agency. As is, unless you're pixel perfect, you usually end up having to slow down if you use a spring or slam into the side of it like an idiot. This carries over into 3D Blast and I'm not super jazzed about it. Another thing is that how you can have to roll into the side or jump onto a monitor to break it. I know this sounds really bitchy and annoying, but it's really annoying to jump into the side of a monitor and have nothing happen. Like, the classics don't even have this problem. As long as you touch a monitor in a ball form, you can break it. Now granted, it stunts your momentum, which feels pretty shitty, but I just wish you could blast through it at high velocities. Which, But that's nor here nor there. The bad Nick hate boxes also feel a bit small, and largening them would probably be the best option to make it easier to destroy them. And having small platforms in an isometric game is just an asinine idea, and anyone who coded that in should be sent to the depths of hell right next to George Clooney. Also, the shields legit miff me. Okay, so there's a normal shield, which is fine. You know, it works like it's in Sonic 2. You can tank an extra hit. And then there's a homing attack shield, which the homing attack should already be a normal move in the game if you ask me, which just renders the original shield fucking useless. So why is the blue shield in the game? It doesn't do anything. It would be better if its development hours were to be spent towards, I don't know, maybe another shield or an air dash for the fire shield. Or maybe a goddamn save feature! Easily my biggest gripe with the game. Because in a post-Sonic 3 world, there is no excuse not to have a save feature in your Sonic game. Like, if I want to play Diamond Dust, I should be able to just play Diamond Dust instead of having to play through the whole game to then play Diamond Dust. Okay, so this is weird, right? In the original Genesis games, you can collect as many emeralds as special stages you can enter per act. I like this. It rewards players who are skilled and knowledgeable, but it doesn't make it easy for new players to get the emeralds. But in the Saturn version, you can only get one emerald per act, which I feel limits the player in a way that's kind of unfair to the player, but that's fine. It's cool. It gives you another opportunity to get an extra life, which are few and far between in this game. But and then in Director's Cut, you can only get one emerald per zone. There are seven zones in the game. You have to get one emerald every zone, and on the last zone, Tails is just hidden away in Robotnik's belly. You can say it's so you don't get all the emeralds before seeing the harder special stages because of how Knuckles and Tails have different sets of special stages, so you can play through the first four of one and three of the other, but then I'd say, why doesn't the player get warped to a special stage that corresponds to their emerald amount instead with how many they played with that character? It doesn't make any sense. Now you'd think after all that complaining that I disliked the game, and to that I'd say you probably have short-term memory loss. I mean, look at the title, numb nuts. Now the first major complaint that people levy against the game is its controls, saying they're slippery, and to that I'd say it's, it's just, this is just momentum. You know the funny word everyone loves, momentum? This, this is real Sonic momentum. You can't just turn on a dime. Now the controls are made tighter in Director's Cut, which I appreciate, but in the original they were still pretty good. Once you get used to them, you can maneuver Sonic very easily through these levels, and it just feels good. This is 3D Genesis Sonic. Something I don't often see pointed out is how hands-off the game is in, as opposed to other 3D games. While loops are automated, everything else is completely hands-off. Look at the springs. Even in the adventure games, which I'm not knocking by any means, but once you jump onto a spring, you don't gain control until you're falling. In this game, it's not the case and it feels fantastic. Something else neat is how the bosses are actually challenging. All they really had to do was change it so you have to hit the glass of the Eggmobile instead of just anywhere on the Eggmobile, which makes the battles more fair. The only bad boss here I think is Volcano Valley, because the perspective makes it hard to land on the thin pipes to hit Eggman. The game only has one playable character, which is understandable for the franchise's first leap in the 3D, even if it's not real 3D. Director's Cut does add Supersonic, which is very appreciated though. The game's level design is also quite nice. They don't feature too extreme a slope since I'd require them to render out many angled running Sonics, but the terrain isn't flat either. Once you get a good enough speed, it's really fun to blast through some of the sections. 
I can't help but imagine a widescreen port of this game, with settings to toggle between Genesis and Saturn OSTs, and graphics, maybe the toggle between emerald limits per zone, and maybe other enhancements like a post-game homing attack that really change up the game. Or even a spiritual successor that's isometric and fixes the issues with new features. I've always envisioned that the homing attack and a bounce move would be perfect for this type of game. I can only hope that maybe one day I can make it. Hell, I've even already made a full soundtrack, which I'll link in the description. I only made it in GarageBand, so it's not the best, but it's alright. Maybe someday I can work in that game. Maybe not. Maybe someday you'll check your attic and finally find me. Hey, so this part's unscripted. I just wanted to go into the game more in depth. I realized in my script I talked a lot about what I didn't like. I talked about what I liked in terms of like controls and just some stuff about how it's authentic, but I didn't exactly talk about the game in its current state. So I wanted to do that here and now, so let's go. So what a lot of people are probably asking is, what version of the game should I play? And I recommend the Director's Cut or the Saturn version. It depends on what graphics you prefer at that point, but it's up to personal preference. And just in quick, I want to describe each, both versions. The D Director's Cut uh, Genesis version, that's like very classic Sonic, um, very Oshima-esque, I guess you could say. And the Saturn version almost kind of feels like a sequel to the US soundtrack for a Sonic CD and a prequel to Sonic R, obviously. It's just a lot of very organic noises. It's very almost tropical, I guess you could say. And I actually really enjoy it. I prefer the Saturn version. And I really hope someday we can get a more accessible way to play that instead of the Genesis original. Not Genesis, Saturn original. But with that, I wanted to talk about the specific stages now. Green Grove is definitely a great Green Hill-esque tropical paradise. It's just this fun little zone you get to run around in. You get introduced to all the mechanics. It's just this cool little area. It's fun. I don't know what else to say about it. Rusty Ruin is a bit of like a... It's not a slog like Marble Zone is. It's uh, it's like the Marble Garden, all right? It's, it's kind of long. You kind of wish it was over by the end of it, but there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just a fun zone. It's, well, it's pretty fun. It has a fun spinning mechanic, and eh, it's just a nice little zone. It's cute. Spring Stadium, in my opinion, might be maybe the worst zone in the game. It's not that bad, really. It's just kind of annoying. There's a lot of, like, spikes in the ground. There's a lot of springs. But, like, you can tell, like, the way the springs were managed. It's, like, four springs, and only, like, the top right one is actually a real spring. It's just kind of annoying, there's a lot of bouncing around, there's bumpers that like aren't even real bumpers. And there's no real major gimmick to it, so it kind of just feels like it's a eh, whatever stage. Something I will critique the game on is that every stage does feel a bit samey. You kind of have the same gameplay loop, and rarely do the gimmicks actually change that loop. And next up is my favorite zone, Diamond Dust Zone. I really enjoy this zone. It's just this cute little snow level. It has great music across both versions. Uh, maybe someday I'll talk about Sonic soundtracks and I'll spotlight the specific songs in these soundtracks because I love both soundtracks. And Diamond Dust Genesis is just like a fantastic song. Um, it has this great freeze frozen mechanic that's actually very similar to Sonic Mania. You sort of get frozen and you can slide around and you bounce off the walls. Something I didn't talk about is that when you roll into a wall, you bounce off of it, which I think is really fun and I wish was carried over into the actual 3D games. I think it's just, you can get a lot of use out of it. You can bounce off walls. It's really cool for like some nice little spectacle moments in the level design. It's just fun and the ice is kind of like that. Next is Volcanic Valley, which is like Diamond Dust. It's good. It's just not as good. I didn't enjoy it as much. It's definitely a fire level. So there's lots of lava, there's lots of fire, and if you don't have a fire shield, it can be pretty frustrating, but the fire shields are easy to come across if you know where to look for them. Yeah, and they're pretty common, and in this game, people talk about you get hit all the time. You don't get hit all the time in this game, so it's pretty easy to hold on to the shield if you're cautious enough. And with the shield, it's a pretty fun level. Next is Gene Gadget Zone. This is an alright zone. It's kind of like iffy. From this point on, it's the mechanic levels of the game, you know, it's like Eggman's Lair is where we're at, and 
it's nice. It's nothing special. Same with Panic Puppet. Um, act 2, you don't have to collect Flickies, which I think makes it one of the more fun acts of this, the game. It's just nice to be able to run through the game and like really speed through it. It's just cool. I like it. The final weapon, and which is the final fight, it's just this kind of pedantic final fight. It's really anticlimactic. It's more like five or six fights, if I recall, but you just like alternate between them every time you hit them. It's annoying. I'm not a big fan of it. And I feel like even like a Death Egg equivalent, which is, and I know the robot is definitely a spinoff of the Death Egg, but I feel like it would have been better if it was something like that. And that's it. That's me talking about all that. Uh, that's like a half the video now, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not going to be editing this portion as you probably noticed that much. It's just going to be the background footage and uh, I hope you have a good day. See ya. That's all I could think of for the subject for right now. I'm sorry for the lack of uploads. Actually, no, I'm not, but that's nowhere here nor there. Um, since the Jojo iceberg, my mental health has really plummeted and I just wasn't in the shape to work on much of anything. So with that, have a good day and I'll see you next time.